labor unions, labor leaders in Chicago to introduce himself. He was, he was really enthusiastic. He got zero calls back. So my question, what I, and I raised that in the book, and they said, why was he sure they should, recall, they should return his calls? But why was he the one doing that? Why doesn't labor find out about that and invite the guy to, to lunch and say, we don't want to even sell you a particular story right now. We just want to tell you why labor is really important. Go through what we've been talking about. Why labor matters. So that when something happens, you'll have some context for it. And so that when your editor says, who cares, you can say, here's why we care, and here's why this matters, and here's how this connects to all this economic malaise people are feeling. Here's why we need to write about this kind of stuff. So I think it's think on a practical level. Unions close up shop at 4 p.m. Try reaching a labor person after 4. You can reach corporate people at midnight. Sir. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> I'm in a union, and I came in late, so you may have covered something that, and also I, I don't mean to say I know all these answers. You said something about uh, irrelevance of union, the intellectual, uh, you know, uh, I believe it's still true, and I know I'm still in this union with department stores, which is the same, they're the same people that have the grocery stores here. Um, your money in your union dues generally will go to the Democratic Party, even in terms of elections, you know, funding elections or backing. But the only one person was McCain, although I know that other people were involved, but I remember McCain, and it might have been pre-9-11, because after 9-11 it may be that we don't talk about these things, partially because of that, there's all these other things going on. But McCain would say, you should, as a union member, be able once a year or so to designate that that particular percentage of your dues, which could be a little bit, uh, goes to this party or that. But I you might be able to tell me, did that was that ever resolved? But at that time, that was a big question, I thought, myself reading the paper. It doesn't mean it worked. Everybody knew about this, you know, because we're not going to see a union rep in there sometimes but once or twice a year for two minutes. I, also, I always tell young people, don't forget what unions did 50, 60 years ago. You wouldn't have had, you know, in that, in that sense. But for right now. Do all, does all my money still go to the Democrats when it comes to, uh, no matter who I might, yeah, or <laughs> McCain wanted to get it through, I know, and other people. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's another interesting point, speaking broadly to it, uh, one of the things I argue in the book is that labor has got itself in a trap by almost uniformly supporting Democratic candidates. It basically, and, and that's gotten more and more pronounced. They used to support in congressional elections of maybe a dozen or two dozen Republicans. Last time, I think, in 2006, I think there was one or two Republicans they supported. And I argue in the book that they've basically become the election arm of the Democratic Party, carrying out its operational efforts, you know, the door knocking, the telephone banks to get out the vote. And they do that, they do that at the expense of making their issues part of the values debate, part of the, part of the whole political discussion, so that when they, quote, win, as they did in 2006, they're not part of the uh, real election mandate. Yes, they, um, you know, they get a minimum wage, and the House Committee on uh, House Committee on Education and, and whatever it used to be called changed its name, put labor back in its in its name, and so on. But until they until they become really an independent political force, I argue in the book, they're not gonna they're not gonna get anywhere. And one interesting sidelight is that the I found it fascinating that the that the firefighters are a majority, or at least a plurality, plurality Republican union. They're 44% Republicans, 40% Democrats, and yet they influence, just by a really brilliant strategy, I don't have time to go into detail about now, by, by that kind of strategy, they really had the kind of, had the, moved political calculus in a way that labor hadn't done in, in, in eons, the democratic political process. Thinking in terms of, uh, you know, what we call Reagan Democrats, you know, at that time. So you would see why people say, hey, maybe, you know, I've always been a Democrat, but I want to vote for a Republican this time. I might, and I'll, I'll let you go. Uh, I think John L. Lewis was Republican 100%. Coal miners in those great union times. And I think Jimmy Hoffa went Republican. I don't know if he was a Republican, but I think those are the two labor unions uh, that were kind of Republican. 
John L. Lewis of the coal, coal workers and and Jimmy Hoffa's truck truck drivers. But I, I think Jimmy Hoffa's hatred of Bobby Kennedy would have made him whatever Bobby Kennedy wasn't.